We are all set. India versus Australia, the first of the three-match ODI series. Let's look ahead to it on ESPN Cricket for Match Day. Joining me shortly, Tom Moody and Deep Das Gupta. Gentlemen, I hope you all are ready for international cricket resuming for India. Australia have still had a bit of it uh, in England. Let's start with our five-point preview for the first ODI. Deep, we're saying KL Rahul should bat in the middle order. Uh, I agree. I think KL Rahul shouldn't be uh, bat in the middle order because uh, he got 100 in the last series batting at five. And that's the area where uh, there, there has been, it's been an area of concern, number four, number five. And in the last couple of series, you see Shreya settling down and so has KL Rahul at that position. And he's also keeping wickets. So I think I'm, I I don't want to uh, ruffle feathers there or or change anything there. Uh, I think uh, that's one area that India has struggled in the last maybe three four years now. Hmm. Tom, yeah, look, it makes perfect sense. I think since the retirement of M S Dhoni, uh, it, it's left a big uh, gaping hole in that middle order. And we saw in the in the most recent World Cup uh, that was really the the issue that India faced the confusion around selection in that position. So I think. If, uh, if they feel that K.L. Rahul uh, is the fit, they should stick with him. He clearly shows statistically that he's comfortable there and he can perform there. Uh, it's just a, a luxury of uh, a situation where India have got so many people that can open the batting, but not as many that can bat four, five and six. Mm, all right, fair enough. In which case, there is now an opening slot that is up for grabs, along with Shikhar Dhawan in Rohit Sharma's absence. And Mayank Agarwal and Shubman Gill both have impressive list A numbers. They both had impressive IPLs. Tom, who would you pick? Yeah, look, I, I would be going with uh, Mayank Agarwal uh, purely on the basis that I think that he's he's the more mature, developed player. Uh, and I know we're a fair way away from the World Cup, but... You know, it's not like he's long in the tooth. He's got plenty of cricket left in him. Uh, he'll be probably at the peak of his powers come that World Cup. So if you do need uh, a substitute to replace uh, Rohit Sharma or Shikhar Darwin, which is your preferred opening combination, to me, he's the obvious choice. Deep, Agarwal or Gil? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to go with Tom. I, I'll go with Agarwal to open with Shikhar. Uh, obviously, he's in great form. So is uh, Shubman, but uh, Mayank, uh, he's, he's in a different league right now, the way he's batting the IPL, or the way he's been batting the last year, year and a half. Uh, yes, he's got a few opportunities in New Zealand, but I guess it was a while ago now. So uh, looking at him, the way he's batting, I'm, I'm going to go with him. Hmm, all right. What about Australia's selection calls? There's no Mitchell Marsh in this tournament, Tom. And they've picked a very highly rated all-rounder in Cameron Green. Good first-class numbers, hasn't played international cricket. Would you give him a spot in the eleven in the first game? I would love to give him a spot, but I don't think he fits in. Uh, he's he is a pure all-rounder. He's a he's a quality batsman, uh, and he's also you know a tall. He's about six foot seven. This young kid uh, who can bowl one forty. So he's he's rare commodity. Is someone that can fit into your top six but also carry some workload with the ball and have an impact. But I think at the moment, the timing is not quite right for him. It wouldn't surprise me if Australia, if you phase him in for a game just to give him that exposure, uh, but he has to come in for Marcus Stoinis. And at the moment with Stoinis's form, I think you can't not pick him in the first game. Yeah, even if there was any doubt on whether Marcus Stoinis's place can be looked at deep, that IPL has probably settled it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and also his versatility. I mean, he can bat top of the order, he can bat lower down the order, can give you... And, and listen, I mean, if, if you look at that Australian side, they're so well uh, balanced side. You have someone like Pat Cummins might come in at number eight, nine, and he can bat. Mitchell Stark can bat. So, uh, you know, I think uh, it's, it's a very well balanced side. And um, obviously, I mean, it's a very good side as well. Hmm. All right. What about India's bowling selections? Kuldeep and Chahal or Kuldeep or Chahal? Deep. Uh, the fact that Hardik is not bowling, that means you will have to play Jadeja. Uh, he's the only all-rounder that you have in that squad. So, uh, then if Jadeja plays, then you I don't think uh, you have the luxury of playing both the wrist spinners there. So, it has to be one of them. Uh, and uh, I would pick Chahal over Kuldeep at this point in time. So, unfortunately, can't play both the wrist spinners with uh, with Hardik not bowling. Yeah, I'm one of those, romantic, those romanticized with the idea of playing both wrist spinners, Tom. And it's a shame that India find themselves in a position that at times they can't accommodate both. Would you still? Well, well maybe you and I will be sitting at the same table because I'm a romantic <laughs> as well. <laughs> but uh, I, I honestly believe that uh, Cool Deep's not bowling well enough to, to, to command a position in the playing 11. 
Uh, and if you are playing the second spinner, uh, Jadeja would be the choice I would be going with. Otherwise, I'd be playing another pace bowler. Hmm. All right. And finally, we're saying that Marcus Stoinis and Manas Labushin have to bowl more in the absence of Mitchell Marsh. Tom? Yeah, absolutely. And I'll include Glenn Maxwell in that as well. I think that trio would be the three that will be the make up the the fifth bowler for Australia. And you can guarantee that Finch will be very clever the way that he manages his bowlers and make sure the right matchup. So he'll getting he'll try to get overs out of Maxwell, you know, to the left-handed batsman and and uh, you know whoever's sort of on a little bit of a roll or has some sort of rhythm, making sure that they get uh, plenty of overs out of that individual. But they've got three bowlers to get that fifth bowling slot complete, um, mm. so they should be able to work through all that. Mm. Conversely, you think deep? This is an area for India's batsmen to look at. You got Stark, Cummins, Hazelwood, Adam Zampa for the fifth bowler. It's a bit of a question mark. It is, but you have the luxury of three very good bowlers as well. I mean, on their day, they can actually bowl. 10 overs, the whole quota. Uh, maybe not Ma- uh, Manas Labushkane, but apart from that, I think Stoinis can on his day. Uh, so can Glenn Maxwell. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's the luxury that Adam Finch has. I mean, three bowlers to get 10 overs. I mean, come on, uh, look at India. I mean, you you, you have no one who yeah. can be in the top six. I mean, if you look at that, I mean, that's the difference for you there, straight away. Fair enough. Thank you very much. Deep Das Gupta, Tom Muri, more from you ahead of the second ODI. We're all set for it. India v Australia at the SCG with 50% capacity. It'll be nice to see the fans back. And of course, all the analysis on ESPN, we can for match day.